And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. The testaments of the twelve patriarchs to the Israelite nation has humanized the sons of Jacob. For a period of time, religion has made the people and their tribes in the scriptures unrealistic. Today in the beast culture, the workers of iniquity want to make it appear as if the ancient bloodlines of the Bible no longer exist. The synagogue of Satan combined two species of mankind, gave them one faith under the umbrella of religion. For example, the workers of iniquity took people from different countries in this world with various ethnic background and gave these people the Israelite heritage under the religion called Judaism and Christianity. If you have not noticed, religion combined various groups of people with different bloodlines into one. That is how they were able to create the spiritual Israel false doctrine. Once the people accepted this doctrine, the head leaders of the synagogue of Satan, Rome, proclaimed the God of this world is coming to save them. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Israelites, it is important that you listen carefully to the doctrines of the workers of iniquity in the beast religion. Who is the God of this world? Everyone should know by now that the God of this world is Satan. He's the prince of the air. The Most High said through his Messiah that his kingdom is not of this world. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. When the workers of iniquity in the beast culture made race the primary identifier of the people, this gave the Satans the opportunity to take away the heritage of the people the Most High made in his image. Additionally, the abominable hybrid species were able to mingle themselves with the indigenous population. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. When the hybrid species mingled themselves with the creation of the Most High, this brought forth a lot of confusion. The scriptures made it very clear that the Most High is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Reading the Testaments of the Sons of Jacob, has shown the sons of Jacob in a realistic light. Their testaments give their descendants the ability to relate to them. Religion made it impossible to relate to the people of the Bible. To the Israelites who find it difficult to believe that the sons of Jacob gathered their children to them to make their final words heard, Israelites, the testaments of our fathers is no different to a person in this generation leaving a last will and testament to their children or heirs before they transition to the afterlife. A will revealed the final wishes of a person as well as unto how the person want his or her assets to be distributed to their heirs. When the sons of Jacob, as well as Jacob, gathered their children to them at their deathbed to prophesy to them and to command them, that is their last will and testament. When our father Adam saw that his end was near, he called his son Seth, who came to him in the cave of treasures. And he said unto him, O Seth, my son, bring me thy children and thy children's children, that I may shed my blessings on them ere I die. When Seth heard these words from his father Adam, 
he went from him, shed a flood of tears over his face, and gathered together his children and his children's children, and brought them to his father Adam. The testament of our fathers is no different from you or me writing our last will for our heirs. Some Israelites are trying to make the testaments of our fathers to be some sort of abominable writing. Religion is abominable. However, many of our people love the beast religion. Any mature, responsible adult should have a last will and testament to carry out their final wishes. The Bible is written in two testaments, the Old and New Testaments. Israelites, don't allow the Satans to prevent you from hearing what our fathers wanted you to know. Like all the previous testaments of the sons of Jacob we've read, the testament of Joseph is just as eye-opening like the others. Joseph is the 11th son of Jacob. His mother is Rachel. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. Rachel was able to have Joseph after being barren for many years. The mandrakes Rachel took from Leah's son Reuben, as well as the covenant between Rachel and Leah, made the Most High remember Rachel and open her womb. When Rachel saw that she conceived, she said, The Most High has taken away my reproach. The name Joseph means God will give. Joseph is Rachel's firstborn son. Rachel had two sons for Jacob, Benjamin and Joseph. Joseph is the son Jacob loved very much. The scriptures in the Bible, as well as the testaments from the other sons of Jacob, reveal this to be true. Joseph was indeed the favorite son of Jacob. I believe Jacob loved Joseph so much because he's the son from his beloved Rachel. Jacob loved Rachel very much. The scriptures in the Bible said Jacob loved Joseph because he was the son born to him at an old age. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. The love Jacob had for Joseph caused a lot of grief and sorrow in the Israelite bloodline. Jacob's love for Joseph opened the door to the spirit of jealousy, hate, envy, and death. Although it was our fathers that transgressed against Joseph, their descendants suffer from the evil they brought against their brother until this day. It seemed as if when Jacob loved, he doesn't know how to conceal his favoritism. Jacob was deceived by Laban, his wife's father. Through the wickedness of Laban, Leah, Rachel, Jacob, Zilpha, and Bilhah were manipulated and deceived in the process. Also, Jacob's love for Rachel caused a lot of grief to his first wife, Leah. When Rachel saw that Leah had many children for Jacob, the scriptures said Rachel envied Leah. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Israelites, it's very important that you love your children equally. All of your children will suffer if you allow your favoritism to show. The child that is loved the most will suffer the most. Love your children equally. Before the Most High revealed to me my tribe and Israelite heritage, Joseph and Levi were my favorite sons of Jacob. I could definitely relate to the life both of these men lived. Israelites, over the years I've been on YouTube, I've always said you must have a personal relationship with the Most High. It's through a personal relationship with the Most High, you will be able to work out your own salvation. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. When you establish a personal relationship with the Most High, the favor of the Most High will be on your life. Other people will be able to see the Most High in you. Israelites, you don't have to follow and serve the Most High like everyone else. Serve Him the way He has led you. Remember, when it comes to your spiritual journey, your walk is unique and tailored to you. There's not a default way for you to serve the Most High. Draw near to the Most High and He will draw near to you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Joseph served and feared the Most High from an early age. 
Also, Joseph established a personal relationship with the Most High at an early age. A good heart attracts the Most High to you. The Most High walked with Joseph. That is why his brothers weren't able to murder him like their hearts desire. When the Most High is for you, who can be against you? What can man do to you? The Most High has the final say. The testaments of Dan, Gad, and Simeon revealed that the Most High delivered Joseph out of their hands, preventing them from killing Joseph. But his God and the God of his fathers sent forth his angel and delivered him out of my hands. For when I went to Shechem to bring ointment for the flocks and Reuben to Doedan, where were our necessaries and all our stores, Judah, my brother, sold him to the Ishmaelites. If Joseph didn't fear the Most High, when his brothers rise against him, they would have succeeded in killing him. The Most High will fight for the ones whose heart is perfect towards him. The Most High is always looking to show himself strong through his people who truly serve him with all of their heart, mind, and soul. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. Joseph was that son of Jacob that draw near to the Most High. That is why the Most High fought for him. When Jacob gathered his sons to him to bless them and to reveal to them about their future, Jacob blessed Joseph exceedingly. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him, and shot at him, and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breasts and of the womb, the blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Jacob said that Joseph would be the stone of Israel. The Most High would walk with him and that the Most High would bless him in the heavens, in the deep, and in the womb. When Jacob said in the womb, this means he would have many descendants. The tribes of Joseph are not called by Joseph's name like his brothers. Joseph's tribes are Ephraim and Manasseh. The reason Joseph's tribes are not called by his name, Joseph received the firstborn birthrights. Reuben should have received a double portion, the firstborn birthright. Because Reuben sinned a great sin, his birthright was given to Joseph. Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, are the progenitors of two tribes in the Israelite bloodline. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler. But the birthright was Joseph's. The twelve tribes consist of ten sons of Jacob and two of his grandsons. The twelve patriarchs to the Israelite bloodline are the twelve sons of Jacob. The twelve patriarchs include Levi. The twelve tribes exclude Levi. Not too many people in the awakening are aware that Joseph inherited Reuben's firstborn birthright. Joseph's two tribes replaced Levi. The nation of Israel consists of 12 tribes. If Levi were a tribe, then our nation would have 13 tribes. The tribe of Joseph had several well-known leaders. Joshua, the son of Nun, descend from the tribe of Ephraim. When they had made an end of dividing the land for inheritance by their coasts, the children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua, the son of Nun, among them. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked, even Timnath, Sarah, in Mount Ephraim. And he built the city and dwelt therein. Joshua succeeded Moses after his death. 
Joshua was the one chosen by the Most High to lead the Israelites into the promised land, as well as distribute land to the tribes. The children of Ephraim had their land inheritance within Manasseh. Also, half of the tribe of Manasseh did not cross the Jordan, but dwell in the land that was good for their cattle, alongside the children of Reuben and Gad. Manasseh received a double portion of land inheritance. It's the tradition that the firstborn gets a double portion. Because Joseph was given the firstborn birthright, his son Manasseh received the double portion land inheritance. The tribe of Ephraim did not remove the Canaanites from their land. The children of Ephraim made the Canaanites their servants. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. And the separate cities for the children of Ephraim were among the inheritance of the children of Manasseh, all the cities with their villages. And they drave not out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer. But the Canaanites dwell among the Ephraimites unto this day, and serve under tribute. Although Manasseh received a double portion of land inheritance, because he's the firstborn son of Joseph, his younger brother Ephraim received the birthrights. After the sin of Reuben, the genealogy was no longer to be rectified by the birthright, just like you heard in the book of Chronicles. When Jacob blessed Ephraim and Manasseh, he crossed his hands and gave the birthright to Ephraim instead of Manasseh. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you, and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Jacob blessed Ephraim and Manasseh. Jacob said Ephraim would be fruitful and greater than his brother Manasseh. Jacob said Manasseh would be great as well. However, Ephraim would be greater. Indeed, Ephraim was greater. Another name for the northern kingdom of Israel is Ephraim. The tribe of Ephraim led the northern kingdom of Israel. Jeroboam was from the tribe of Ephraim. The Most High gave to Jeroboam ten tribes when he split our nation into two kingdoms. And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment. And they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake. And for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. The northern kingdom of Israel is led by Joseph. Although Joseph, the son of Jacob, name is not mentioned often in the scriptures, when it comes to the twelve tribes, his sons Ephraim and Manasseh represent Joseph in the twelve tribes of Israel. A lot of people often overlook Joseph because his tribes are not called after his name like his brothers. Moses blessed Joseph for his sons Ephraim and Manasseh before he transitioned to the afterlife. And of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land, for the precious things of heaven, for the dew and for the deep that coucheth beneath, and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon, and for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills and for the precious things of the earth and fullness thereof, 
and for the goodwill of him that dwelt in the bush. Let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. The testament of Joseph give us the behind the scenes information the Bible did not disclose after Joseph was sold into slavery. Joseph spoke to his children and said to his children that he did not retaliate against his brothers. Instead, he loved his brothers and he didn't want to bring shame to his brothers. When the Ishmaelites and the children of Mizraim questioned him, Joseph covered for his brothers to not disgrace them. Joseph had strong morals. Joseph gathered his children to him when he was about to die. Joseph said to his children, although he came close to death, he refused to forsake the Most High. The copy of the Testament of Joseph. When he was about to die, he called his sons and his brethren together and said to them, My brethren and my children, hearken to Joseph, the beloved of Israel. Give ear, my sons, unto your father. I have seen in my life envy and death. Yet I went not astray, but preserved in the truth of the Lord. In the testament of Joseph, Joseph said that his brothers hated him, but the Most High loved him. Joseph said his brothers wished to kill him, but the Most High guarded him. Joseph said he was sold into slavery, but the Most High made him free. These, my brethren, hated me, but the Lord loved me. They wished to slay me, but the Lord of my fathers guarded me. They let me down into a pit, and the Most High brought me up again. I was sold into slavery, and the Lord of all made me free. In the testament of Joseph, Joseph revealed to his children that he was taken into captivity, but the Most High kept him safe. To the Israelites in this generation, if you belong to the Most High and your heart is pure before him, he will keep you safe in the land of your captivity. Joseph revealed to his children how the Most High preserved him and saved him from all the trials and tribulations he went through. Joseph went through a lot of persecution. Religion teaches that if a person is experiencing all kinds of trials, like Joseph, that person has not repented from his or her sins. Religion teaches because he or she did not repent, that is why bad things are happening to them frequently. Israelites, when it comes to serving the Most High, persecutions and trials have a completely different meaning. It's the opposite to what religion and men believe. Joseph was blessed and highly favored. That is why all of these trials came upon him. His destiny was great. That is why the Satans came upon him to destroy him. Because Joseph walked with the Most High, he triumphed over all his enemies. Israelites, remember, trials and tribulations are meant to correct, train, and elevate you. That is why the Bible said, count it as joy when you experience all kinds of trials and persecution. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire. Wanting nothing. Through your trials and tribulations, the Most High will show himself strong through you. Joseph suffered greatly, but he was rewarded greatly. Joseph had many trials that came upon him. The Bible speak about his brothers conspiring against him and how Pharaoh's wife did everything that she could to get Joseph to lay with her. Joseph in his testament revealed to his children all that Potiphar's wife did. Joseph went on to say to his children that the Most High don't forsake those who fear him. And I struggled against a shameless woman, urging me to transgress with her. But the God of Israel, my father, delivered me from the burning flame. For the Lord doeth not forsake them that fear him, neither in darkness, nor in bounds, nor in tribulations, nor in necessities. If the people of the Most High in this generation feared him, the doctrines many Israelites are promoting in the awakening wouldn't exist. A lot of the doctrines promoted and taught in the awakening are doctrines that please the flesh. If the people of the Most High truly feared the Most High, hate, slander, mockery, and the diabolical things Israelites do to each other wouldn't be happening. 
A lot of Israelites in the awakening and outside of the awakening do not fear the most high. If they did, their behavior would have changed. If majority of the Israelites in the awakening feared the most high, you would be able to differentiate the Israelites in the awakening from the Israelites in religion. The scripture said, fearing the most high is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Too many Israelites lack wisdom. Therefore, they don't fear the most high. Also, many do not know the Holy One of Israel, therefore they lack understanding. In the testament of Joseph, Joseph said Potiphar's wife threatened him with death and imprisonment. Joseph said that he prayed and fasted for seven years. Through his fasting, he appeared wholesome to the children of Mizraim. How often did the Egyptian woman threaten me with death? How often did she give me over to punishment and then call me back and threaten me? And when I was unwilling to accompany with her, she said to me, Thou shalt be Lord of me and all that is in my house, if thou wilt give thyself unto me, and thou shalt be as our master. But I remember the words of my father, and going into my chamber, I wept and prayed unto the Lord. And I fasted in those seven years, and I appeared to the Egyptian as one living delicately, for they that fast for God's sake receive beauty of face. In the testament of Joseph, Joseph said that at first, Potiphar's wife embraced him like a son because she didn't have any male children. Joseph said for a while she treated him like a son. Later on, she tried to draw him into fornication. Parents, watch out for predators that view your children like their sons and daughters. That is how the unclean spirits in them groom your children to draw them into sin. If your children don't have a personal relationship with the Most High, your children will become prey to the unclean spirits in them. And because she had no male child, she pretended to regard me as a son. And for a time, she embraced me as a son, and I knew it not. But later she sought to draw me into fornication. And when I perceived it, I sorrowed unto death. And when she had gone out, I came to myself and lamented for her many days, because I recognized her guile and her deceit. And I declared unto her the words of the Most High, if happily she would turn from her evil lusts. Joseph used the word of the Most High towards Potiphar's wife to cause the unclean spirit in her to flee. Potiphar's wife said she will abandon her idols to serve the Most High if Joseph would sleep with her. She even said she would convince her husband to forsake his idols as well. Pagans will worship anything. Joseph replied to her, letting her know that the Most High doesn't walk with people who participate in uncleanness and adultery. Did you hear, Israelites? The Most High is far from those whose way of life is catering to their flesh desires through sin. Joseph revealed that he gave himself to prayer and fasting so that the Most High would deliver him from her. This is the confirmation many of you need to help you with unclean spirits that have a stronghold on your life. If you wish to be delivered, praying and fasting as well as repenting is the answer. And when she had prevailed nothing thereby, she came again to me under the plea of instruction that she might learn the word of God. And she said unto me, If thou willest that I should leave my idols, lie with me, and I will persuade my husband to depart from his idols, and we will walk in the law by thy Lord. And I said unto her, The Lord willeth not that those who reverence him should be in uncleanness, nor doth he take pleasure in them that commit adultery, but in those that approach him with a pure heart and undefiled lips. But she heed her peace longing to accomplish her evil desire. And I gave myself yet more to fasting and prayer that the Lord might deliver me from her. In the Testament of Joseph, Joseph revealed that Potiphar's wife went as far as to use witchcraft to get Joseph to be with her. Joseph said that she sent him food laced with spells and curses. Joseph was aware of what she did to the food. He refused to eat from her. Israelites, when your ways please the Most High, there is no good thing will he withhold from you. The Most High made Joseph aware of the spells and charms she put in his food. Israelites, you shouldn't eat any and everywhere. People are evil, especially during the times we're living in. 
A lot of you are suffering from all kinds of diseases because of the food you ate in the spirit realm as well as the physical realm. And afterwards, she sent me food mingled with enchantments. And when the eunuch who brought it came, I looked up and beheld a terrible man giving me with the dish a sword. And I perceived that her scheme was to beguile me. And when he had gone out, I wept, nor did I taste that or any other of her food. So then after one day, she came to me and observed the food and said unto me, Why is it that thou hast not eaten of the food? And I said unto her, It is because thou hast filled it with deadly enchantments, and hast said it thou, I come not near to idols, but to the Lord alone. Now therefore know that the God of my father hath revealed unto me by his angel thy wickedness, and I have kept it to convict thee, if haply thou mayest see and repent, but that thou mayest learn that the wickedness of the ungodly hath no power over them that worship God with chastity. Behold, I will take of it and eat before thee. The testament of Joseph revealed all the things Potiphar's wife did to get Joseph. The Most High prevented Joseph from falling into her traps. The Most High guarded him from all of her wicked ways. And the Lord guarded me from her devices. In the testament of Joseph, Joseph said to his children that patience were great things as well as praying and fasting. Joseph said, prayer, fasting, and a humble heart will cause the Most High to dwell among you. Joseph said, a person with those qualities, if anything befall them, the Most High would deliver them and exalt them. Ye see, therefore, my children, how great things patience worketh and prayer with fasting. So ye too, if ye follow after chastity and purity with patience and prayer, with fasting and humility of heart, the Lord will dwell among you because he loved chastity. And wheresoever the Most High dwelleth, even though envy or slavery or slander befalleth a man, the Lord who dwelleth in him for the sake of his chastity not only delivereth him from evil, but also exalteth him even as me. In the Testament of Joseph, Joseph said that although his father loved him, he never exalted himself because of his father's love for him. He had the fear of the Most High in him. Joseph said that he did not exalt himself above his brothers as well. Instead, he honored his brothers even when they sold him into slavery. Joseph said to his children to have the fear of the Most High in them. My brethren knew how my father loved me, and yet I did not exalt myself in my mind. Although I was a child, I had the fear of God in my heart. For I knew that all things would pass away, and I did not raise myself against them with evil intent, but I honored my brethren, and out of respect for them, even when I was being sold, I refrained from telling the Ishmaelites that I was a son of Jacob, a great man and a mighty. Do ye also, my children, have the fear of God in all your works before your eyes, and honor your brethren, for everyone who doeth the law of the Lord shall be loved by him. The Ishmaelite that bought Joseph asked him if he was a slave. Joseph responded and told him that he was a slave. To the Ishmaelite, Joseph did not have the appearance of a slave. Back in the days, the indigenous black people can recognize a bondman from a free man. The indigenous black people could differentiate themselves from other bloodlines despite sharing similar appearance. Today, if you look black, you're black. Nobody know what bloodline he or she descend from. Back then, it was important to our people to preserve their bloodlines. Today, the indigenous black people are willingly spoiling their seed. There's no barriers nor any attempt to preserve their bloodline. If we could determine who is who by appearance, there wouldn't be a need for the 12 tribe series as well as an awakening. And when I came to the Indo-Kalpitae with the Ishmaelites, they asked me, saying, Are thou a slave? And I said that I was a homeborn slave, that I might not put my brethren to shame. And the eldest of them said unto me, Thou art not a slave, for even thy appearance thou make it manifest. But I said that I was their slave. In the testament of Joseph, Joseph revealed that the Ishmaelites found out that he was the son of Jacob. Joseph continued to lie to them so that he could protect his brothers. The Ishmaelites and the children of Mizraim feared Jacob. They knew that the Most High was with Jacob. 
they knew what Jacob was capable of. Now after four and twenty days came the Ishmaelites, for they had heard that Jacob my father was mourning much concerning me. And they came and said unto me, How is it that thou sayest that thou was a slave? And lo, we have learnt that thou art the son of a mighty man in the land of Canaan, and thy father still mourneth for thee in sackcloth and ashes. When I heard this, my bowels were dissolved and my heart melted, and I desired greatly to weep, but I restrained myself that I should not put my brethren to shame. And I said unto them, I know not, I am a slave. Then, therefore, they took counsel to sell me that I should not be found in their hands. For they feared my father, lest he should come and execute upon them a grievous vengeance, for they had heard that he was mighty with God and with men. Joseph continued to deny that he was the son of Jacob. Everyone around him knew that he was not a slave. Joseph said he endured a lot of things to not put his brothers to shame. After Jacob passed away, Joseph said he loved his brothers even more. Everything he had was also theirs. Joseph did not hold a grudge against his brothers. Because of his long suffering and ways, Joseph was blessed by the Most High. Joseph had a vision that he saw and he shared with his children. Joseph's vision revealed that 12 hearts were feeding and nine were dispersed all over the earth. Joseph went on to say that the other three was dispersed also. And hear ye, my children, also the vision which I saw. There were 12 hearts feeding and the nine were first dispersed over all the earth and likewise also the three. From my understanding of Joseph's vision, the 12 hearts are the 12 tribes of Israel that would be dispersed all over the world. For a long time, Judah was the tribe that was dispersed all over the world, according to the scriptures in the Bible. After reading the testaments of the patriarchs, majority of the tribes were dispersed all over the world. Joseph went on to share more of his vision to his children. He saw from Judah a lamb was born from a virgin. And I saw from Judah was born a virgin wearing a linen garment, and from her was born a lamb without spot. And on his left hand there was as it were a lion, and all the beasts rushed against him, and the lamb overcame them, and destroyed them, and trod them underfoot. And because of him the angels and men rejoiced in all the land, and these things shall come to pass in their season in the last days." Joseph commanded his children to honor Levi and Judah like all his brothers said to their children. Joseph told his children that he knew that the children of Mizraim will afflict them after his death. Joseph reassured his children that the Most High will avenge them. Joseph commanded his children to take his bones with them when they leave Mizraim. Joseph also commanded his children to take his wife's bones to bury her next to Rachel, his mother. Do ye therefore, my children, observe the commandments of the Lord, and honor Levi and Judah. For from them shall arise unto you the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world, one who saveth all the Gentiles and Israel. For his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, which shall not pass away. But my kingdom among you shall come to an end as a watcher's hammock, which after the summer disappeareth. For I know that after my death, the Egyptians will afflict you, but God will avenge you and will bring you into that which he promised to your fathers. But ye shall carry up my bones with you. For when my bones are being taken up thither, the Lord shall be with you in light and Belial shall be in darkness with the Egyptians. When Joseph passed away, all of the children of Israel mourned for him as well as the children of Ham whose land they lived in. The testament of Joseph does not disclose the whereabouts of his tribes. From Joseph's vision, he saw the tribes being dispersed. Israelites, there's a remnant of our people all over the world. Not one country can claim to be the descendants to a specific tribe in our nation. The tribes are everywhere. The Most High is waking up his people from all over the world. Israelites, do not subscribe to a specific modern nation of today to be a tribe from our people. The Most High did say he would gather his people from many nations. The scriptures did say the outcasts of Israel and the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of this world.
And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Paphros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The scriptures name specific regions of this world the Most High will gather his people from. The false charts claiming the tares and their nations to be the descendants of our people are false. Let the Most High reveal to you who you are. I pray that our people can learn from the testament of Joseph. You don't have to descend from the tribes of Joseph to listen to his sound advice. Israelites, when your enemies rise against you, the Most High will strike them down. In the words of Joseph, a great word he said to his brothers that the Bible quoted that happened to be one of my favorite scriptures. Joseph said, you meant evil against me, but the Most High turned it around for good. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. I can't tell you how many times the Most High turn around what a person meant for evil towards me to a blessing. The Most High said, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Israelites, it doesn't matter what the Satan's evil friends, family, and all workers of iniquity do to keep you from becoming the best version of yourself. Draw near to the Most High, fear the Most High, and the Most High will dwell with you. Watch and see how the Most High will make your enemies be at peace with you. To the Most High be the glory. Israelites, keep seeking the face of the Most High. The testaments of our fathers have truly blessed us all. Israelites, allow the Most High to guide you into all truth. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers.